Hello and welcome to my little world. So this week I worked on the Bricktown house and I'm making good progress on it, but it was a process of trial and error on the windows because I thought I could repeat what I had done on the Painted Lady house, but it wasn't quite working out that way. So you'll see my process and it is continuing on to next week. So I just want to give a shout out to Yumika and Torachan and say hello and happy birthday to their dad, who is my son. And thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy seeing my process this week. I started off by marking lines with washi tape on the building to just give me a general outline of where the floors are. So there's like one, two, three, four floors. So the roof covers a floor. And I just use this quarter inch washi tape and I did it double on the sides and single in between the floors just to give me a broad outline. And I measured about 20 inches for the bottom floor and then 20 inches for the next floor. And then the next one is just varying depending on where the uh, roof lines come. And then there will also be windows in the roofs. This week I finally got around to painting the roof on the Bricktown house and I started out by painting it black. This is apple barrel black and I'm not overly impressed with the coverage but it's, it's plenty good. It's good enough. I used it on the railings as well. And um, it doesn't totally cover all the polka dots here, but that doesn't really matter because I don't mind them showing through a little bit. And I have several other layers that I did. But uh, I was quite impressed by the white paint that I used to cover the railing. I had already painted it black, and then I painted the white on top of it. And that coverage I thought was quite good. And that was Americana which is also the brand of the brown and the uh, cream color that I used here. But uh, I painted along the edges and then I painted the inside of that part that, of the roof that sticks out there. And then the next thing I did was to mix some black and white together uh, to make this gray. And then I j was just kind of swooping up and highlighting the edges of those little uh, those little curvy parts of the paper that I used for these roofs. And I um, made short uh, swoops on the upper parts of the curves and longer swoops on the down parts so that it uh, accentuates the edges so they look a little bit like shingles. I also did it up at the very top. So now you can see that how I made longer strokes on the parts that curve down and shorter strokes on the parts that curve up. And it has kind of a bluish cast to it. Then the next row or the next layer that I did was uh, some brown paint. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that the gray paint I used, I used watered down. And then the brown, which is espresso Americana. And I also watered it down. And so when I would first put the paint on, it would look a little bit bright, but then once it dried, it just kind of faded in and, and kind of uh, mixed in against the black background. And I thought it looked pretty good. So with the brown, I just did little spots in the middles of all the places that curved down. 
kind of look like shingles. And then the last thing I did was to use the Americana Almondine. And again, it's watered down. And I just did that in a horizontal direction just to add a little bit more dimension and weathering to the roofs. And I think that once I put the windows on them, that they will make a fine backdrop as the roof. I also made a side piece to match the front roofs. And I just took, there were like three leftover pieces of that curvy uh, paper. And I took that and used that as a template and just cut out some cardboard it was like cereal box cardboard in the same shapes and glued them onto foam board here and painted this one the same way that I painted the front ones. I actually used this one as my test piece. I would paint first on this one to see if it looked good to me. And then I would paint on the ones that were already on the building. So then to glue this up, it, uh, it, warped a little bit when it was drying, when the paint dried. I had it under some books, but it was still a little warped. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to get it on here. I don't have any clamps that would fit this sort of thing. So I ended up coming up with this idea of tying this rope around it. And I just put uh, wood glue on the back of the foam board and attached it to the container and then tied these, I actually tied these around before I stuck it in there with the glue so that they could hold it on. And it worked quite well. Uh, it was, it was kind of bent. And once I put the ropes around it, it sat pretty snug to the container and then it's been drying. So I'm pretty happy with this. And then I also just added some washi tape around the edges of the roofs to give them a little definition. And I'm very pleased with them. It's the next day and the glue is dry. And I also added some blue vinyl to the edges of the container so that it kind of looks like, gives the impression of sky behind the roofs. And then I had a little more washi tape around the edges. I've been designing windows based on this sketch I made of a Beacon Hill, part of a Beacon Hill house um, and I'm kind of switching things around and making them my own. I looked online at some Victorian uh, windows also, but I just kind of used this as a basic idea. And I'm actually switching the sides on this because I think the way I ended up cutting out the foam board for the roofs, I ended up switching it so that the, the one that sticks out is on the left rather than the right. Um, and that means that you have to open that door first if you're opening it into the, to see the inside of the building. And it's a bit of a challenge to uh, do the outside and still be able to open up the doors properly so that you can see the inside. But um, this is what I have so far. I have this design in the front and then uh, this is the door which is going to be cut in half so that the, so that it can be opened and then I have two windows on the side so I've changed it from the drawing had the door on the left but I'm putting it in the middle and making it symmetrical with windows on both sides and I think that's going to look good and then 
I have some other windows and I've just cut these out of paper and then uh, so this is this arch doorway um, that goes on the second floor and then this is a more detailed sketch of the window and then um, I just cut out pieces of paper like that just to tack them up here and see how they look and then this is a design for the one of the windows on the roof and then there will be a different design on the one next to it which is just a piece of plain paper right now but this is the idea I think I'm also going to put uh, a window or two on the side of it where you can see um, I did a really good job of putting the brick on the side because I've finally gotten good at it after working with this paper for so long I was able to match up the lines really nicely so you know practice makes perfect but I will probably put a couple windows over on the side there but I haven't cut them out yet so this is just to give me an idea to work with because I need to see things to see if they look right. And so that's the idea so far. So this is the window that I designed with uh, divisions between it that are one and a half by one inches. So then I was playing around with the other windows that I made smaller and I needed to adjust them a little because the the divisions didn't fit so with this one I've put four divisions in it and no divider in the middle like this one this one has a divider in the middle and then it has like three at the bottom and three at the top and the top is curved but with this one I made this one shorter so it has four divisions and then I made these down here with five divisions and nothing in the middle so I think that looks good these both have five this one and this one up here have six and this one has four and then for the one around the side which I also made then that's going to be the same size as the ones on the bottom with five divisions I bought the, this adhesive vinyl at Hobby Lobby that's called matte opal I was trying to get something similar to what I got for the painted lady house uh, but this is a different brand and a different color and it's um, I'm hoping that it will work in a similar way uh, I think it I think it will look good as the windows but I'm not sure yet how it's going to turn out because I haven't done it yet so I cut out the shapes of the windows and uh, I just use scissors to do it and uh, it has this nice half inch grid on the back so that makes it easy for cutting and measuring and these strips over here I haven't cut the arched parts at the tops of them but these are all the pieces that I need for the windows on the brick townhouse I cut out a template for curtains and there is a top piece and then there will be two side pieces I'll just um, reverse this side for the other side and then just shorten it on the top and bottom to make it fit for the uh, shorter windows and then I'll cut those out of my scrapbooking paper well it's a good thing I did a test piece before starting to put it up on the house which I was about to do because this vinyl is not nearly as transparent as the one I used on the Painted Lady. So on the left is how this vinyl looks and you can't see the brick 
through it at all, whereas the other one I used on the Painted Lady was quite transparent, and I painted underneath it and put the curtains underneath it so that I was going to do the same thing here. But if I do that, the curtains will just look like lumps and the paint won't show at all. So next to it on the right, I have a square uh, of the vinyl that I put down and I've painted some of the almondine color on it. And boy, this light is not, casts a lot of shadows. So anyway, this is the almondine color that I'm using and I just painted it on there and then and then I would need to put the curtains on top of it in order for them to be seen. So back to the drawing board. So against my better judgment, I went ahead and started um, attaching the vinyl um, window cutouts to the brick townhouse. And I say against my better judgment because I was feeling like I should figure out what I'm doing on the windows, do that all, and then attach them. But something in me just wanted to go ahead and put these on and just work from here. So I kind of have to listen to that voice in my head, even though it doesn't always make a lot of sense. And sometimes it ends up causing problems. But, you know, I just kind of have to go with that process. For myself and that was what I wanted to do and it it always helps me to have things here to help me visualize and see what I'm doing and what it's going to look like so I'm just going to work from here and work on the curtains and painting these and I think I'm going to be able to figure it out so now I've done it and I'm happy with it it is coming along and I ended up just using the almondine to paint on top of the vinyl stickers. And then I used tacky glue to attach the curtains to each one. And I left a rim around the edges that is going to be covered by washi tape and I'm probably going to paint it before I put the washi tape on because the washi tape is kind of uh, see-through. I also put these windows on and these aren't going to have any curtains on them and painted them with the almondine and I'm happy with it and this will continue. This is all for this week but I will continue this next week and we will get the parts of the windows covered that go around the edges and also some clear uh, cellophane over the tops of them so that they will look more like windows. So I will see you then. Hope you enjoyed this this week. I'm having fun with these windows now that they're turning out the way I hoped. Bye-bye. One little bonus before I go. So I made a tunnel for my train to put against this wall. I just cut it out of black foam board. And then I found these rock stickers on Timu and cut them out and put them around it. I also have train tracks in my garage. I used to have all the containers that make the tall buildings in the garage and I set up my doll village out there because I didn't have room for it inside at first. So this is how my garage looks. So here's the full effect of the train in the village next to the train station and the park. So bye again and I'll see you next week.